on this computer. Well, hello, LMC friends and family. It is time for another Friday Faith Talk. Um, we get to be joined by the Wellman family today. So we're going to open with a word of prayer, and then we're going to get to hear a little bit about how faith is going for them. So I ask you to join me in a word of prayer. Good and gracious God, we give you thanks for these continued conversations, for this time to gather, um, even virtually, to hear about how our friends and siblings in Christ are doing and how, um, how faith is getting them through this time. We ask that you guide this conversation and bless us and make it a fruitful and enjoyable time. We ask all of this and all the things we carry in our hearts in your name and for love's sake. Amen. 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 All right. Well, I'm going to have you guys introduce yourselves. Tell us a little bit about who you are and um, what you do in life. All right. I will start off. I'm Steve Wellman. I farm here on our family farm. That's been, um, we're the third gen, I'm the third generation. Our kids obviously are the fourth generation. But uh, also I serve as the director of agriculture for the state of Nebraska. And my background with Luther Memorial started when I uh, married Susan back in uh, almost 35 years ago now. So it's, uh, I, gr I grew up as a member of St. John's United Church of Christ in Syracuse. And I'm Susan Wellman and I teach high school business classes at Syracuse High School and also um, an advisor for the FBLA program. And we moved to Syracuse in 1978, and so I've been a member of Luther Memorial since then and was confirmed there and, and just feel like almost a lifetime member since it started with confirmation. So. I'm Sarah. I'm the Director of Government Relations at Warner Enterprises in Omaha. Um, I'm usually traveling, but obviously with COVID-19, that's changed quite a bit. I've been a lifetime member of Luther Memorial since birth. And baptized, confirmed, and so forth from there. Well, great. Well, Sarah, as you mentioned, uh, COVID-19 has made our lives interesting for the past three months. What have the biggest challenges been in those three months for you and your family? I think the adjustment of what our daily lives look like, I think everybody's kind of been challenged with that. Um, initially, it's one of those things of when you're trying to keep our social distancing or physical distancing, I think for us being a hugging family, uh, that's probably been the biggest challenge too. Um, I've kind of been stuck around these two uh, most through COVID. They're kind of my quarantine squad, I guess. Uh, but I think we're all facing different challenges on how to adapt on a daily basis. And what I've at least learned is it, it's grounding and humbling to prioritize the things that are really important in, in that, and we'll continue to talk about is family and faith. Yeah, I'd say the same thing. It's just, um, it's just not being with family the way we always have in the past. That's been hard. I mean, we decided right away the three of us would be together, even though Sarah doesn't live with us. We, that was just going to be our core group there. But um, beyond that, just trying to follow the safety measures, do what's supposedly right, but then still wanting to interact with family. It's just sometimes more mentally frustrating just because you don't know the right answers. And usually in times of unrest, you come together with family and friends and now we're supposed to stay six feet away and it's tough. <laughs> and I really, and it was also hard, you know, to end school the way we did. That was just, you know, I've got close relationships with a lot of those students and it's just been hard and, and I haven't seen them. You know, and it wasn't like we said goodbye. It was just, there's no school. <laughs> yeah, very sudden change. Yeah. yeah. So from my perspective on, on the farm side of it, uh, social distancing usually is not a problem. Um, <clears throat> we spend a lot of time kind of by ourselves uh, doing different tasks. But uh, as from the state of Nebraska being involved with the Department of Agriculture, a lot of challenges have been brought up through COVID due to, uh, you know, the impact on agriculture and, and the markets and, and trying to be able to be helpful has been a challenge. Uh, we are there to serve the state of Nebraska and serve our, our citizens, but it's been a difficult task to actually provide helpful information and, and answers. Yeah. And I imagine, especially as it's always changing all of the time, so to provide answers, also to know what you're supposed to do and, and how you can interact with and, and with all of those changes. Right. Um, 
which also, you know, having changes means we get to be constantly surprised about how things are going. So what has been surprising? What have you enjoyed? What have you found surprising in the past couple of months? Um, yeah. The other two probably can't say this because their, their jobs have been going nonstop, but um, you know, I'm at home because everything's been canceled. So um, I haven't had a major schedule to follow and that gives me time to reflect and relax and, and not be pushed by that. So um, it's got, it allowed me to do some things that I say I should do and you don't always do it. And so reflecting, praying, Bible study, even on Zoom, we were doing it weekly instead of our monthly uh, circle of faith. We were doing it weekly with our Zoom. So that's been that's been a, a little surprise that, that I've enjoyed. So one of the surprises for me, I think, is a lot of times change is hard for people. Well, this time, a lot of change was forced on us. We had to, we had to change our normal family lives, and we had to change how we conducted business and what we uh, normally do. So I think, uh, in a way, it was a, a good test of our ability to respond. How do we respond to change? How do we respond to uh, what we normally do in life? And do we reassess now what we were, what our priorities are were from before? And hopefully, I think in, in to my mind, I, I know there's been changes, but hopefully our priorities from before are still our priorities as we exit this thing. Because yeah. uh, you know, if if a lot has changed in our mindset of what what we're going to prioritize going forward, then you know that could be a good thing. But uh, hopefully. Uh, Hopefully our priorities were, were pretty well set in faith, family, and, and, and our jobs from before, and, and that will carry on. Carried us through this, and it'll carry on afterwards. Are any surprises for you? Uh, I'm usually traveling, so it was definitely a huge adjustment. Um, so I think it's one of those things of being surprised when I am an extrovert of actually having peace and silence and being kind of lo alone and, you know, quarantining. And um, I think sometimes it's very challenging to find that quiet space um, for us to kind of be isolated. But in some ways, too, I think it's really refreshing and needed and necessary to kind of make you know, make that disconnect, but also reconnect to your faith or, or your family and those kinds of things as well. Yeah, I feel like uh, those of you who are extroverts are, how many of you are, are all three of you extroverts? That's two. <laughs> <laughs> the two of you? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, they're the extroverts and I'm the one that gets out in the public. <laughs> <laughs> You know, there's a surprise for you there. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I feel like for, for our friends who are extroverted, it's been its own unique challenge to learn quiet and reflection. And I don't know about you, but for me as an introvert, the surprise has been how much I actually miss people um, and miss those connections as well. And I'm learning what are my priorities and what I value in that. So um, very much so. Um, so Friday Faith Talks which means we're doing it for church, which has looked very different for two months, three months now. What are you missing? Um, and what have you enjoyed seeing change? What has been, what's been fun in that, in church? I miss the fourth row of pews <laughs> on the north side of the church. <laughs> I miss knowing where you all sit. <laughs> I don't know who anybody is anymore. Right, right. <laughs> Uh, no, I think we, we miss we miss the church structure being there on a on a weekly basis with with our church family. But um, you know the the changes that have been made and implemented. Uh, I can't say I I I think driving up and going to church for close to an hour that's not all bad either. So it's uh, it's all about the message and and what you take home with you afterwards. I miss the people. <laughs> it's just, it's a church family and um, I love being a part of it. I love singing um, and serving. I've gotten to sing a little bit, but um, I don't know if you remember, but 
Ash Wednesday, you ended up not being able to help with the imposition of ashes or serving communion. And so I was the one that got called. And um, though I was nervous that night, it was, I can't, I still can't really describe the feeling I got that night of being able to help Pastor Sarah to half the church I helped with the ashes and the other half the church I, I gave communion to that night. And so it's just been really hard. Um, you know, that was a humbling experience. And preparing for Easter and I love Easter and when you did the all you know when we hid the alleluias and you had that um, yell fest and you know you were everybody's looking forward to Easter and doing that again and um, just to you know it just ended it's kind of like school too you know school ended and church ended and we didn't see it coming and so that's just been been hard but I know you know it shows that we've been able to get together and church is more than the building but we make the church and we need I like being in that building with all my church family. So I've missed that, but I really appreciate what you and Pastor Sarah's done to make us feel connected. I think with, with these types of things, as well as going online, it gives us more opportunities to connect um, and more opportunities to connect with others and share the word of God. And I think that's a great takeaway. Um, even when we can't physically be together and share those moments, we're sharing in a different way and recognizing where those benefits come in. And I'm definitely grateful to be able to tune in when I can. Um, work continues to be crazy, even though I'm remote work at home. And um, so when you're able to maybe tune in for something during the week when you want to connect um, with your faith and with God and look to others on where they're leading, I've I've definitely um, caught myself wanting that more and doing that more and really appreciate having the opportunity to talk about it tonight too. Yeah, I think it's been one of the hidden blessings of some of this is getting to see other people's faith in church and it gives us a, a swift kick to maybe think about how we want to do it, talk about it with other people too outside of the church building. Um, how does our church, our faith move outside of that? Um, so, yeah, but I'm with you. I miss, I, I, I hated that it just ended and it just, I was on maternity leave and it ended. So it's been, it's been first, weird. Yeah. The first time I came, cause I helped sing right for the Maundy Thursday service and coming into that building and, and just having it empty and knowing Easter is going to be empty. That was just, that was power overpowered <laughs> a little bit. <laughs> Yeah, it's, it's hard, so, but we'll get to have our Alleluia Easter yell fest when we all get back together again soon. The honking's been fun, it's just not quite the same. Yeah. <laughs> you can't hear everybody in the same way. <laughs> you don't know who it is. <laughs> yeah, so, as you guys have been doing faith differently, how and who are you praying for right now? What are those prayers like for you? Well, I'll, I'll start. Uh, my, my praying is basically continued from how it has been normally, normally praying for family and friends. Uh, more recently, I mean, there, there's been extra need uh, since, since the pandemic started for, for many people. So prayer for our uh, elected leaders, prayer for the people making decisions that impacts all of us, prayers for the, um, the medical professionals that, that have a, a huge task of, of um, taking care of people and also being a resource for guidance and, and what we might expect through all this. And then just more recently, a prayer for respect, uh, people to respect each other, people to respect uh, the law of the land and the, the people that have the task of being those that uh, enforce the law. I think this uh, general lack of respect is, is really shown up recently, and so that's been added to my prayer chains. Yeah. And I, I would agree with all that. That's all the things that, that I have been thinking about, too, and praying about as we go through. Um, I just add, I also um, pray that people are forgiving. Um, there's a lot of decisions being made with very... Um, little knowledge or guidance we're not used to that and, and it'd be the church the schools the government um, even the medical profession and so um, I just pray that everybody's 
forgiving when those first decisions aren't working and they have to go back on maybe their word and make some changes because they're not sure of that. And I just hope that um, people accept that and, and, and be willing to say, okay, let's go forward again. In some ways, I feel like my daily prayers have changed a little bit more so on what I'm grateful for um, and what God's already provided. And also praying for patience and empathy and understanding and also for those who are feeling alone and isolated. I think a lot of people are hurting right now and help like praying for them to find ways to connect to God or um, other people even just so they don't feel completely alone. And I think that's something that we all kind of need to keep in mind as well. And when it comes to gratitude, you know, we're now in a moment of having to take every day at one time and every day has brought something different. And so really leaning on that faith in God and how he's going to provide for us on a daily basis is where I've refocused my attentions and, and also pray for others to kind of look at those things. You know, we're just gonna take one day at a time and the rest of the stuff we're giving up to God and leaning into our faith. Those are some big prayers, y'all. <laughs> But, but those are also the prayers that we're called to take to God, right? It's the big things in our lives and the, the thank yous and the helps and the I don't know what to do kind of prayers are the things that God asks. And, and I think this is the time that we're all praying. Um, so those are some big prayers. We, we shouldn't expect to have all the answers to all this. We just uh, should, should expect to have faith in God that uh, he will lead us through this and we'll all come out uh, better when it's over. Yeah. Yeah. Right. God's always loves God's people through things and having that faith and, and trusting in God and trusting in each other to get through it. So, yeah. So, well, maybe that's, I mean, maybe that's the lesson God's teaching me and I won't put it on you, but what has God been teaching you as we try and navigate this time? Sarah said it, patience. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's been my, um, I'm not good at that. Um, I like to have a plan. I like to know what's happening. And uh, the only other time I, I can remember when that was one thing when I was pregnant, maybe you did too, you know, you don't know when that baby's coming. That's one thing you can't plan most of the time. <laughs> and, and yet, you know, there's an end in sight. <laughs> and so this is, you know, uh, hard because you just, you don't know from day to day, like Sarah said, taking it day to day. And only God knows how long and what changes have to be made. And and so I just um, teach me patience that some things aren't going to be the same and just have to go on. Yeah. For sure. Go ahead. Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, I mean, I think there's all lessons if you just quiet your mind enough to recognize them. And I, again, I think that the world is faced with this moment of disconnecting and unplugging. And as I mentioned earlier, I, I kind of been isolated and, and enjoyed the quiet and continue to enjoy the quiet, but also because I can recognize some of the things that have been speaking to me and following my heart and my gut. And also, again, kind of going through those daily lists of what I'm grateful for um, has helped me recenter and reconnect in additional ways to my faith um, that it wasn't that it was ever lost. It just feels stronger than ever. And mostly because we don't know what to anticipate. And so it's hard to plan ahead and anticipate things. And it doesn't really do any good to hang on to what our previous normal was. Like, I just know that moving forward, this is the new normal and we're all experiencing it together. I'd say the one thing that sticks out in my mind that God has taught us uh, or me through this is that the actions of one or a few can have a huge impact on a lot of people. So in our minds, I think at times we, we think that, well, we can do what we want to do and it it'll, won't have much of a ripple effect, but certainly I've seen through all this that uh, either through, through because of COVID-19 and, and if you're, if you happen to be infected, obviously you can affect other people's lives and and therefore, uh, it, it does ripple and it can ripple, ripple a long way. And then also just um, 
some other examples more recently of, of actions of a few that have definitely impacted a lot of people. And so that's for me moving forward, be wary of, of your own actions and, and what, uh, how they might lead to something else. Again, big and powerful lessons that I think we get to learn over and over again. I wish they were one and done lessons, but my guess is we'll have to learn them all over again. And I think the other part of that is that recently the examples of that have maybe, uh, not maybe, but have been negative. So how do we turn that around? How do we take action of one or a few and make that a, a positive uh, effect on a large amount of people? Yeah. I don't have the answer to that, but I think it's uh, obviously it, it can be done. We just need to figure out the right, the right approach. Yeah. yeah, I think it's, I think it was Margaret Mead who said something about never underestimate the power of a small group of people to change the world for that's all that ever have. So, and that's, we get to be that. So, well, I'm going to say thank you very much for, um, joining us for this Friday Faith Talk. And we get to end each one as we end a lot of our prayers and our time together. Um, and I'm gonna say on all God's children say, and you get to say amen. So, and all God's children say. Amen. amen. amen.